How you doing? <sighs> Wonderful game. <coughs> Tremendous win. Sellout crowd. Atmosphere was astonishing, impeccable. It's grand. First time ever truly experiencing that at the college level. Tremendous to see all the celebs, the, what do you call it? What do you call it? What do you call it? The celebs and uh, what do you call the people that played him before? Alumni. alumni. Thank you. Thank you. I went blank. The alumni coming back, it was uh, tremendous. And seeing the kids take the field at the conclusion of the game was uh, unbelievable. I'm proud, I'm happy to be your coach. I'm proud to coach these young men. <coughs> I think uh, 16 million viewers in the last two games. It was tremendous. One of the largest, uh, second most streamed game on Fox in history. Number 10 most watched regular season college football game in Fox history. Pretty darn good to get started. Let's go. Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. Coach, last week the message Say it again. Was, last week the message was, it's personal. Uh -huh. This week you're also facing a rival. So is the message, it's also personal, uh -huh. or is it more little brother week? Well, God hasn't given me the message yet. When he give it, I promise you guys will be the first to know. Coach, Monica how you Pascal, doing? Associated Press. Pleasure. I want to ask you, you were very specific in bringing your coaches here that you knew their mindset. Mm -hmm. But when you also brought them here, you have let them be themselves, given them their autonomy. Right. How important is that for the success of this program, but also in their interactions with the players and being showing up as well as it has in the first two games? Well, when we uh, really looked to them to hire them, we wanted to understand their characteristics, the way they – got along with people, the way they connected with the youth and parents as well, the recruiting ability. There's so many components based on hiring a coach nowadays, but all the guys that we have on the staff come from a relationship, a relationship from a relationship, and they are great parents. And that's something that matters to me because it's hard for me to give you the opportunity to lead someone's child when you're not even leading yours. So that, that's one of the components that I truly look for. But these young, these coaches are unbelievable, and I don't try to tell them how to do what they do. I may, I may be the navigational system every once in a while, but we brought them here because they were really good at what they do, and I'm proud of them. Hey, Coach uh, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Uh, yesterday, doing? Coach Norvell up at CSU was saying how excited he is to be a part of this game, uh, yeah. especially because it's the first time that um, both teams will have a black head coach on the sidelines. Yeah. I'm um, just curious for you what that, oh. that means. They had a black head coach last year, didn't they? No, for, for both CU and CSU in this, yeah, in this rivalry yeah. to have. They didn't uh, play them last year. They didn't play them last year. What about the year before that? They didn't play them last year? No. Oh, thank you. I'm like, I thought they did that. My bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, what I hear, I haven't met this gentleman, but I hear he's a good, good man. I know he's a great coach. Um, he has those guys playing hard. Um, I, I like that. I like that. I'm glad he said that. I, I like that. And just for you, I mean, I'm just curious what it means for you um, each time you do get to face another fellow black head coach on the other sideline. I know this well, will probably be the only time this unfortunately, year. Unfortunately, one of the brothers got to lose when you face another black head coach, unfortunately, and you want to see us win. I mean, that's the thing. But uh, besides that, man, it's, it's just tremendous getting this opportunity and allowing the nation to see that we are more than capable of doing a suffice and a sufficient and a great job. So um, I'm, I'm happy he, he pointed that out. And I have the utmost respect for him, truly. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, Jack Harlow with uh, Buffalo's Wire. Um, we saw a video that came out of practice yesterday of some of your players saying that a lot of the Louis luggage hasn't even seen the field yet. Would you agree with that statement? I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. If they hadn't seen the field yet, that's, that's, not, that's not our fault. <laughs> that's not our fault. 
Hi, Coach. Adam Oster Tiger, 24. How are you doing, sports. I'm doing excellent. Hope you are as well. Uh, we saw Van Wells go down late uh -huh. against Nebraska, and a true freshman came in from. Curious if we can get an update on, on Van. Um, healing, healing. Uh, the thing about it, this is a game, you know, it's next man up. And uh, yeah, I came in and did a great job, and uh, we didn't miss a beat. That's the thing. Uh, we've, when, when any of these running backs go out, when those receivers, um, go out. We the uh, the defensive line has a tremendous rotation. We're trying to find those two linebackers that we feel are suitable. We uh, have rotations in some of the dime packages and the nickel packages as well. So we have a the depth that we need. We could always use more, but I feel like uh, we we're okay at that position. We're okay, but hopefully uh, uh, Van gets better soon. Ariel Orsuto, How are you doing, Ariel? Doing very well, living the dream. Um, so yesterday, Coach Norvell, first of all, was talking endlessly about Shador and his success. Um, but he also told a story that when you first got your job at Jackson State, that you reached out and asked about the air raid offense to try to get right. the best of Shador. Do you recall that? And, yeah. And can you kind of I, tell I call, from your perspective? I called several, several persons. Uh, honestly, I think my initial call I'm going blank. My initial call was to was it Leach? Mike Leach. Thank you. Thank you. It was to Coach Leach. That's why I was trying to grasp his name. Coach Leach, God bless me, rest him. That's who I called initially because he's the he's it. He's it. So that's pretty much uh, how we did it. And I interviewed several persons, and that's how I met Brett. <coughs> through through that, but definitely because I knew we had a stout defense led by Dennis Thurman and we wanted to put up more points. So I wanted to know the intricate details of that offense. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell from the How you doing, Canada. sir? Good, and you? Uh, I want to ask you about Travis J. and Brendan Gann, a couple of your Florida State transfers that uh -huh. looks like they're just now getting back. How close are they to getting on the field, and, and what uh, do they add when they are healthy? I don't think they're close. I don't know what they add. I, I, I got to see them. I got to see how they work and, 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 and how they fit in and do they know the scheme. But they're tremendous. They have tremendous attitudes, um, which is really positive. They tr have tremendous work ethics. So I, I really like what I've seen thus far, but I can't wait to see them on the field. I feel like they're, they're a little bit away from really playing and, and starting the game. Hi, Coach. Rylan Scholes with Ralphie Report. You've had four players in the first two weeks get Pac-12 Player of the Week honors. How does it feel that your players are getting the recognition they deserve from the well, conference? Th that's the goal. That's the, that's the aim. I mean, we want them to get even more accolades. I mean, that's, they don't play for accolades. They play to be dominant, and they play to go to the next level and come here and get a solid edu education. But when they're noticed, and when they're highlighted, that's that's tremendous. That's a tremendous plus for this program. Coach Jimmy Searfoss, two four seven Sports. Shador was hit quite often last week. What needs to change on that offensive line to keep him protected? Um, that has a lot to do with a multitude of things. It's not just the line. It, it could be what we called on that particular play. It could be if the receiver ran the right route. It could be checkoffs. It could be a multitude of things. So you never really know what's going on throughout a play because we had several busts during the games. We had several things that, that didn't go as it should have even before the snap of the ball. I mean, count the, the protection, making sure the right protection was uh, sick, signaled and, and so forth. But we hope to get the ball out of his hands a little quicker so he can protect himself. <coughs> God, what's wrong with me? Hey, Coach, Pat Graham, Associated Press. Um, you, yes, sir. You opened this up with the numbers and the celebrities who've showed up and the alumni and all the great things that are happening. I mm -hmm. mean, Colorado is the center of the football universe right now. Do you take time to just soak it in and enjoy the moment a little bit? And no, not following? really. I don't have time to enjoy the moment. I don't, uh, you, Santa don't have time. You know, he got to deliver the gifts. He ain't got time to enjoy his cookies. Okay, that's all he gets. I ain't got time for that. I got to keep it going. I got to keep this machine going and uh, make sure we stay on the right path and make sure we're locked in and we're focused on the right things. Make sure we're practicing adequately. Make sure we're giving it our all. Making sure we're making the right adjustments and doing the 
playing the proper personnel. So it's a lot. It's, it's a lot driving this train. It's not easy. Coach, we saw Juwan Mitchell get the chance to start yes. this, this past weekend. Yes. I know he's only been here for a couple of weeks. What has allowed him to quickly integrate himself with this defense? He, he's really an intelligent player. He really knows the game of football. Not only that, he's instinctive. He He's way more instinctive than the other linebackers. Um, he's very physical. And uh, his aptitude for the game, like he knows football. That's the main thing. Getting to hear that quickly and learning the scheme is phenomenal. But he loves the darn game. Coach Sean Keeler of the Denver Post. Um, Shiloh visited Colorado State, didn't he? 2018, yeah. one of the Trabot Shador with him. He and Shador. What did yes. he tell you about there? And I understand they might have reached out to people uh, from your camp a couple years ago uh, about coming up there as well. What do you know about Colorado State? I don't know much. I mean, uh, I think, was it Coach Bobo was there? He was, uh, we had a relationship and he recruited my son. So that was, uh, I know they had a good time. They really did. I think they got in an argument on the trip. I know they called me that night fighting with each other, I, probably about the room, or trying to bring a girl to the room, something stupid like that. I promise you, and the other one probably didn't want to leave. That probably was it. I think that was it, matter of fact. But uh, they, uh, they enjoyed their trip tremendously, but I think they enjoyed it here much better. Coach, you brought up the other day about how your attractability right now with offensive and defensive line isn't what it is with uh, DBs. As you recruit kind of during the season, mm -hmm. put that plan out, what is your focus and how do you change that? Um, it's already changed. I say that so you can highlight it, so you can print it and run with it, and you did just what I wanted you to do, so thank you. I appreciate it. So, I mean, obviously, when you have a coach to play defensive back, your tractability is skill position. So uh, we don't have a tremendous problem getting those bigs. I think we have a tremendous rotation of bigs right now, offense and defensive line. Um, you haven't seen the offensive line as of yet because the, the solid five has been in there, but now we have a six going in at center. But uh, trust me, those guys are uh, are, are coming. They're, they're coming. Um, we had we, we're receiving so many calls at this point right now. It's it's absurd. Um, uh, just inquiring about what we do and how we do what we do in uh, visitation, desiring to come on a unofficial or official visit. So I'm, I'm I'm liking where we are right now. I'm truly liking that. Hey, what's up, Coach Jake Schwann? It's DMVR. How you doing? Doing great, sir. How are you? Excellent. Um, you showed this at Jackson. You guys only went for it on fourth down once last week, but where does that kind of tendency, that aggressive tendency to go on it for it on fourth down? That's, that's just believing in uh, the team. It's believing in the staff. It's believing in uh, and understanding the flow of the game and the different possibilities of the game. A lot of things that you see that we may go for it, we've already rehearsed that in practice. We already have gone over that situation several times during the week because we had an inclination that we may be at fourth and two or, or, or third and three, you know, in that particular yard line where it's kind of risky for a field goal and too close to punt. And your defense is playing well, so you might as well give it a shot. But we go over those situations in practice. Hey, Coach. Nick Rothschild, Denver 7. How you doing, sir? Good, good. Thank you. Um, love the video with you and Peggy in the locker room after mm -hmm. the game. And you said you're proud to be the head coach here in Boulder. Mm -hmm. and, um, considering all that, do you get a sense for what the Rocky Mountain Showdown means to the state of Colorado and, and how important it is for, for not only the, the alumni and the people in the state, but the kids, the high school kids coming up watching? Um, you got to give me one at a time. Now, you just got me all hyped up about the Nebraska thing. You just bombarded me about that, right? And that's tradition. That was tremendous tradition. Now you wanted me to understand about the Rocky Mountain Showdown. So you got to give me some, some, some verbiage or some – some literature on something, you know, just to brief me. But trust me, um, this, is, this isn't my first rodeo when it comes to that. I, I, I think the Balkans and the Saints were quite a showdown, as well as playing against the 49ers, as well as the Cowboys, 49ers. I could keep going, Cowboys, Philly, you know, Cowboys, whoever, was always <laughs> during showdown. Uh, baseball as well. So it's always some type of adversity that you have against uh, someone in close proximity of you. Yeah, I had two divorces, which was a heck of a showdown, too. <laughs> yeah. 
So don't tell me about the showdown. Huh? Hey, Heck Coach Carlos showdown. Bryant, DSM. Just wanted to ask you about Arden Walker, a local kid, transferred in from Missouri. Can you talk about how his game is elevated uh, since he's back in Colorado? Well, he 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 was he was that guy. We're we're lucky to have him. We're lucky that uh, he's truly contributing for us. He can play, plays with a lot of energy, but just a great overall young man. And I'm proud of the man he is on and off the field. I truly am. Hey Coach, you want to, about the protection again, it did seem like you know, a lot of those sacks happened. You know, Shadour was telling us after the game that it took him a little bit to settle in. And a yeah. lot of those sacks were happening then. Did it feel like once he settled in, that that protection got better and that maybe it's just a matter of if you guys can settle See, the thing about when something happens, you don't really know what's going on. You just see the, the TV cut and he's getting sacked. You don't know who missed the block. You don't know who ran the wrong route. You don't know if he missed the read. You, you never know what happens on those type of plays. So you would have to go over each play one by one so you could understand what transpired on those plays. I just learned not to really get emotional with him about it because when I watch the film, then I see – what really transpired. So I don't really get upset with him, but I know for a fact he's not one to hold the ball. He's, he's not one. He, he pre-snap reads are excellent, and he knows where he's going with the ball normally. So when something happens and he's getting sacked, something tremendous was supposed to happen that didn't go the way we wanted it to go. I trust him, hopefully. Hey, Coach Nick Miller, Fox 31. My man. How you doing? Uh, 2-0, and and obviously you, the first two wins, you guys win in different manners, but it feels like the mentality of the team is not being satisfied That's and right. trying to continue to build. So going into the game against Colorado State, what is it going to take to be able to be dominant in all three phases of the game for all 60 minutes? Well, we wanted to get out to a great start in practice today. We cut practice down a little bit, but we wanted it full speed and a tremendous tempo, which we got out of the guys. Um, we got to get started. Oftentimes, coaches, teams, they wait till – Saturday to get started. You get started today. You get started <coughs> on the scouting report this morning. You get started when you touch that field, when you snap on that chin strap. And having a good start translates to a good start on Saturday, and that's what we need. Um, we we want to exceed expectation. If expectation is to win, we may understand that. Let's exceed that. Whatever the expectation is, let's exceed that. Individually and uh, combined as a team. Uh, we're winning, but we're not playing our best football. That's a tremendous sign, and we can't wait to build off that. We, we want to show you a game that we put it together offensively, defensively, as well as special teams. We want to show our fan base that game, and that's what we're chasing. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Um, Matt Rule had comments after Shador mentioned that he was disrespected by the team. He said, I've never disrespected an opponent a day in my life. I never will. What, do you have any response to, response not, to that? Not really. Um, that was unfortunate. I didn't even know anything about it. They said they were praying in the middle of the field, so it's cool with me. I mean, I'm happy if that's, that's what they were doing. I'm, I'm, amen. I'm for that. I'm all for that. Let's turn the page. Let's get on to Colorado State. That's over. Yeah, and in, in the fact that you're turning the page, you also seem very kind of like subdued, very cool, calm, collected right yeah. now. Um, what is that that mentality that you have right now? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a consistency of, of, of who I am, and, and I rock steady. You know, I, I get a little feisty and a little hype, and I start changing uh, as the days grow on to the game. You know, I get more determined and focused and locked in. But – Right now, I have a trust and I have a belief that, that we're going to do what we need to do. I have that, and uh, that translates to our young men that's in that locker room as well as our coaches. Not only the young men are watching me, the coaches are too. They're watching how I move. You know, a multitude of them have been with me, so they know this. Uh, but some of the new coaches, they, they got to understand we have a consistency in everything we do. From the way we act, from the way we talk, from the way we walk, from the way we go about our business, we have a consistency, and we want to translate that into the young men in that locker room. We, that's what we're searching for. That's what all of us are searching for, isn't it? Consistency. Not only from ourselves, but from the people we choose to befriend and love. Is, that was it? Yeah, that was it. Okay. Thank you. God bless you.